So welcome to our live studio session at the Kigali Global Dialogue. I'm Terry Chapman. I'm an associate fellow at the Observer Research Foundation. I'm joined by Joyce Masuya, who is the Deputy Executive Director of UN Environment and Assistant Secretary General of the UN. So Joyce, uh, I just want to ask, energy transitions are obviously a substantial part of UNEP's work, uh, and the role of women's leadership in this area is of particular interest to you. So why is it that, you know, what is the significance of women in this space, and why are you focusing on that area? Uh, thank you, Terry, uh, for having me. Um, we are focusing on that area for three reasons. Uh, as you know, energy transitions, it's a community issue. Uh, in most societies of this world, particularly here in Africa but elsewhere, women are at the uh, central in decision-making processes, but also in bringing the entire community together. So we believe in empowering women uh, as a key drivers to transition communities into uh, sustainable energy sources. I think the second is if you look at the demographics, most countries, women do play a key role in labor participation from the top to the bottom. Um, here in Rwanda, for example, you have 63% of women in the parliament. So just think about the asset of policy making power of women. And that's why we believe this is important. Thirdly, I would add this is not a one man's or one woman's show, the energy transition and or climate change. It's everybody's show. So women have to be part of the story, and that's why we think women have a central role to play in the environment and more broadly on uh, energy transitions. So uh, speaking of sort of the climate commitments and partnerships and communities, I mean, how do you see uh, partnerships that transcend borders sort of being in an ideal framework for achieving our shared goals and our shared commitments? That's a very good question. You know, I always say uh, environmental challenges do not have passports. <laughs> they do not have geographical boundaries. And I think it's only through collective actions, public sector, private sector, academia, we can make a difference. And I'm particularly impressed by this particular Kigali Global Dialogue, just seeing the diverse participants that you've managed to attract, international organizations, but also private sector, entrepreneurs, public sector, young, old. Um, and th those are the kind of energies and dynamism that we need to actually make a difference in our shared values, and certainly for environment. And do you see a particular sort of value in an India-Africa partnership? So the Observer Research Foundation is obviously uh, an Indian think tank, uh, and we're looking to work more in Africa. I mean, is there a specific sort of value to that partnership that you see? Yes. Uh, you know, I'm from Tanzania. And when I was growing up in Tanzania, most of my neighbors in the neighborhood were actually Indian Tanzanians. So I think we should put things in context. There is a very strong historical links between Asia and Africa, particularly India and Africa through the trade, uh, historical trade and uh, people to people exchanges that happened before. I think second, if you look globally as a global institution, uh, there is value for African countries, Indian countries to learn from each other. Um, for example, I met with um, women entrepreneurs who were here for this meeting who are working on solar energy. We were discussing how can we help connect her to uh, entrepreneurs in Africa. So the entrepreneurs in Africa don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of knowledge sharing, lessons sharing is uh, third. I think fourth, uh, I would add, if you look at the projections, Africa, Asia, the next economic frontiers. Uh, so when you talk about economic development, wealth creation, poverty reduction, the more we join hands together, the better it is. Yeah, great. Uh, and just as a final thought, uh, UNEP, what are the one or two sort of key critical issues that you're going to focus on in the next five years? Uh, two, three issues. One is definitely climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, this September, our Secretary General Antonio Guterres is having a climate action summit in New York, which is aimed to provide a platform at the highest political level to bring actions that have worked mm -hmm. in the spirit of sharing. So climate change is one. Mm -hmm. The second is nature, okay. biodiversity. And next year we have a COP on biodiversity in China. Again, the idea is to look at how do we as communities and human beings coexist with nature. 
I would like to note, like here in Rwanda, what the Rwanda government has done with their guerrillas mm -hmm. and protecting them. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. So those are the kinds of uh, initiatives that we are trying to learn. And then thirdly is air pollution and its impact on health. Mm -hmm. uh, the urbanization trends are increasing. Uh, if you look at the projection, 70% of global population by 2050 is expected to be in the city. So how do we plan our cities so we don't also harm our lungs uh, by, um, uh, air, through air pollution? So those are the three broad areas that we are focusing. And cross-cutting is what we call sustainable production and consumption. Mm -hmm. We have emerging middle class for most countries. We buy a lot of things. The question is how do we actually uh, sustain the consumption of mm -hmm. the emerging middle class in a sustainable fashion. Great. Well, we will look forward to sort of keeping track of UNEP's work in the next couple of years. And I would like to thank you for taking the time to just have this quick chat. Uh, and I'd like to thank our audience for joining us at the Kigali Global Dialogue.